what can we do if we feel like we have an overly sensitive heart when dealing with people that affects your emotions and feelings often? Salam, what do you do with the emotional heart and when dealing with people often? I don't know. That, that type of question needs more, more, more information on that, inshaAllah. If it's emotions in what sense and not to get too involved with people at an emotional level, means that when you open up for the whole world your heart, you're bound to have difficulties. So you learn on how to keep everything superficial, relatives, families, friends, everything just superficial, how are you, uh, expect nothing, dialogues, how's everything, how's the weather, how's good, good. Don't make everything to be very deep in your life and put your emotion into every story somebody tells you as if you're sending your soul out now to carry the burdens of what somebody's saying, this one's sick, that one's sick, this one's… Especially subcontinent when they get two minutes to talk to you they want to talk about their entire generations of who's sick, who's not sick, who's well, who's not well and put a whole progress report. Not only that's very time consuming for the shaykh. As soon as you want to see with them, you want to tell them the whole life story of everyone you've ever known and how they're sick or not sick, everyone's going to be sick. But the, the fact that you're getting so involved in everyone's life is going to make you sick. So we have a, a boat that Allah has given to us as a najat. Everyone has a lifeboat, like a little raft because it's so fragile. You're trying to put your family, your children and steer them to safety. So visualize we're on a lake of fire, everywhere is fire now. You're on a little boat trying to tell them, this is what I learned, this is what we have to make wudu, please we have to wear taweez, you kind of keep them on the boat. Now we're getting into a more fiery time where people didn't believe but if you watched, you followed, you believed. As a result many people now are in a fire. And what are they trying to do? Because what they practice, they felt lost. What they did, they got sick. Whatever they're doing wasn't working for them but they look at your life and say, you seem to be going okay. Now what they want to do now? Jump onto your boat. We want to come spend time with you. Say, what? Yeah, we ruined your own home, now you want to come to my home? You want to come to where I am? So this is the human nature of when people are really seeing a world of difficulty they want to now jump where they think it's safe. So alhamdulillah those who follow their lives are inshaAllah safe, they have a lot of peace and, and protection all around. So everything then with a grain of salt now, protect your family, protect your loved ones who can fit on that boat of yours and everybody else don't ask for too many of what their problems are, what their sufferings are, what their difficult, oh inshaAllah, inshaAllah they'll make it better, that's it. Don't bring everybody's suitcase and come to the shaykh and come to the email, my, my jad, my aunt, my grandma, grandma, grandfather, grandfather, mother, mother, father and two cousins and a relative. So keep everything at a bit of a distance because now everything is sinking, inshaAllah. Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How can I be of service? Where do I start? Help me, <laughs> Nuh Muhammad, um, everything of your being be of service. Give support, give a like, put a nice comment, these are the easiest ones, the ones whom have an ability. <clears throat> they want to transcribe every language you speak, it requires a transcription for these talks, for these videos. So then you have to email help me and then that'll go to the necessary person who's in charge of all of the transcribers. If you have a technical ability then email us what your ability is and we'll try to send that to the technical people who are using that for <clears throat> the technologies, their publishings, their understandings of, of uh, ranking within social media, so many, many different aspects. Just email us with help me on, on what your ability is and alhamdulillah.
And the least of what you can do is press the like and press share and put two comments, inshaAllah. Sayyidi, can family members affect us spiritually? For example, ever since one of my family members came back from back home, my recitation of Qur'an and Tasbih has reduced. Affected my Iman. We teach, alhamdulillah, about energy. So it's obvious that answer. We've taught about everybody's energy affects us, good and bad. But it's not going to be a crutch in which you don't function anymore, you don't see everyone anymore and you just hide trying to preserve your energy. We've talked before that this is a symbol of you need more energy, your practices must be much stronger. Everything that you're doing has to be stronger. You should keep yourself in a constant state of wudu. You should recite Qur'an maybe only for yourself and the audience that's interested. If you feel that people have hasad then you recite what's necessary, recite the du'as, recite the salawats. And all of these things show us when somebody's like vampiring our energy or taking our energy, it's a sign from Allah that you should be more protected, your practices should be stronger because Allah is the one whom protects. But it doesn't mean hide yourself in the closet and be scared because then people will use that as excuse for everyone, everyone's taking my energy and become a little bit cuckoo sounding. That everybody taking my energy, everybody's taking and every problem. We've got somebody who emails, oh you took my energy from far away, the shaykh is, is, is taking my energy away. Then emailed you the same guy and then started saying, you took my energy, everyone took my… Okay that's now, yeah that's cuckoo land when they start talking like that. This is a real haqqaiq of energy flowing back and forth on a daily basis with every interaction we have. So this is a matter of learning how to shield yourself and build your shield of protection inshaAllah. And in, in, in days that are coming the amount of shaitans are so much and we've talked before that the dajjal is taking away faith. Faith is, is like a, is a shirt that become worn out. Don't ever think your faith has been granted to you and it's just going to be, it's not. Faith is like a shirt Prophet described, it gets worn out. So unless you're doing the actions that increase faith, good character, good actions, actions that are selfless, going out feeding people, doing of service, uh, giving in the way of Allah it renews your shirt, renews your faith, makes your faith to be strong by your participation and your activity. And Dajjal's purpose is to pull the faith, pull the faith one, one thread at a time until people find themselves with nothing and many people losing their mind, many people losing their mind. Why? Because the shayateen are energy beings. If you are not strong on the practice or you have an underlying weakness within the mentality, these devils as they fly around they mess up all the circuits in someone's head and what they hear, what they think they're hearing. So many, many difficulties are coming. We pray that Allah protect us, preserve us. And, and grant us the love of Sayyidina Muhammad which is immense najat, immense najat inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi, what is the first basic step to love Sayyidina Muhammad and can we go to the ocean of Muhammadan reality without physical shaykh, without a physical shaykh? Well you couldn't have asked that question without a physical shaykh. <laughs> You're asking a question from a physical shaykh, asking to reach to a place, then you're saying, if I didn't have a physical shaykh, you have a physical shaykh because you're asking the question. So could you have found that ocean by yourself? Mm, unlikely but you can never say no because Allah guides whom He wants. There are whom are murad and murid. Whom Allah want to give, He gives and that's between Allah and His servant. But for the standard, not the exception. The standard practice is that you go for the lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad because the overwhelming barrage of humanity is against the Muhammadan haqqaiq. They all start talking about shirk and shirk and shirk and just nobody between you and Allah and they're 
That's how Dajjal pulled their faith. As soon as they talk like that, their shield of protection has dropped and that's all Dajjal wants is to make you think that between you and Allah and you got it and you're going to be powerful. And you left being behind the imam and you went to the side and before you know it you push the imam aside and it's just you and Allah. And that's what Dajjal wants you for an attack because now you're full-fledged under attack. So always behind the imam is our protection, behind Sayyidina Muhammad that Prophet that ask Allah on my behalf, that shield me from what badness is coming that with the power that Allah is sending to your heart, send to me and dress me and protect me. So then the shaykhs teach you how to make your awrad, how to make your salawats, how to attend the majlis of the, the salawat the Nabi and the shaykhs give the teaching that counters the satanic teaching that is already all around you. Every relative, every television, every radio is already your shaykh. So if you don't listen to this signal and this guidance, you're already under the influence of satanic forces. And anyone who tells you, don't follow a shaykh, he's a shaykh teaching you not to have a shaykh because he's giving you advice. Anyone giving you advice is playing the role of your guide. And the biggest guide that everyone follows, he has one eye. We were expecting what Prophet described for us, a one-eyed representative that would teach you with one eye. And your Lord is not one-eyed, He's two eyes. He has perfection, Allah grants perfection. So whose one eye is everyone listening to? The TV. Day and night it's your guide. Day and night it tells you, watch this inappropriate show, watch this, no, watch this, no, watch this. Feeding you continuous. Now people are locked at home and they say what they call binge watching, right? The Dajjal got popcorn with you, he's sitting on the couch and says, watch the next one. Now watch this one, now watch that one, get some more popcorn, we're gonna go go. Who's doing that? No, Allah's not doing that. So it's already He's influenced everyone. So now for you to go out and find a guide and to follow the guidance and learn how to taslim and that's the oceans of ihtiba to obey Allah obey Rasul and the ulul amri minkum and the ulul am who carry the command from Sayyidina Muhammad This is wajibul taqlid to follow and have ittiba, to follow and to obey. How could you be in the army of Sayyidina Mahdi if you don't accept anyone to be a general? You're on your own, grab your siwak and run. <laughs> they probably don't even believe siwak, say he's a shirk. <laughs> Nabi Musa was huge, huh? They say they saw the Asa. Nabi Musa was huge in height. We said Sayyidina Yahshua was huge, like a 40 foot maqam. His, and they said, oh this is like an asa. I said, but the asa looked like a human's asa. Maybe this was like the toothpick for them because in that eye the asa must be like a tree. That was some trivia from last night inshaAllah. You're finished? Yeah. Okay. Sayyidi, during a women's menstrual circle, should they stay away from worship? If they cannot pray, what can they do instead? Yeah, there are many hafiz are the, the ones who memorize Holy Qur'an. So of course they recite, they don't stop reciting because of a, a, a condition that Allah puts upon them. So everything is to remain the same. So a lot of scholars won't say that but the wudu is light upon light. It only is a protection, there's nothing that would make it to be haram. So you wash and continue to keep yourself in a state of washing. You cannot pray but you can wash, you can meditate, you do all your tafakkur and don't touch the Qur'an because there's an energy emanating from Qur'an and there's a cleansing happening upon that person. There's a cleansing of energy upon the female when she enters into that cycle. All the negative energy is being purged from the body. So that's not the time in which to take the positive energy of the Qur'an because there would be then a conflict between the positive and negative charges. 
As a result Allah said, then refrain from touching the Qur'an. But them who are Hafiz and Hifz of Qur'an they can't turn that off. So they don't go blank on that month at that time. So this is, yeah, they can continue their practices with that which doesn't require anything to be touched. They keep their self in a state of wudu just to combat the immense amount of negative charges that are trying to attack. But don't enter to the masjid and make your salah, you can sit and meditate inshaAllah. As Sayyidi, 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 Sayyidi. Do we need to find a shaykh and tariqah in our local area or country so we can benefit the most? Yeah, now the world has changed. So one understanding is that everywhere is closed and what Allah opened for online then you are in the majlis of the shaykh but just coming online. What you hear from these teachings and to assume that they're everywhere like McDonald's is not correct. There are more false shaykhs than real shaykhs and there are many deceptive paths than real paths. So for people coming new thinking this fantastic, this going to be everywhere and they're all Muhammadiyoon, that's not going to happen and it's not. And Prophet described his companions like stars on a dark night. So it means that these are small in number and they shine very bright but the haqqaiqs that they teach. A sign of their haqqaiq is their uloom and their knowledges. Not the knowledge that everybody read from the book and translated from holy hadith but the realities behind those and that's what they're in search of. These haqqaiqs and these realities they're a sign that they are from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad reaching out towards humanity as a najad and as a rope. If you should find something like that then you stick to it and don't think that it's McDonald's and that any corner you go to you're going to get it with some fries and a coke. It's a deep, deep reality. If you're able to find that you hold on tight because the deeper the reality goes the more people are going to fall off because they just can't take it, they don't understand it, they don't know how to absorb it. And that's why in the last days what knowledges would be coming are unimaginable and they require the sword of Sayyidina Mahdi to guard that one because it's a whole different reality coming on. And this is from the knowledges that Sayyidina Abu Huraira described that if I describe Prophet gave me two knowledges that he poured into my heart. One I repeated and these are all the hadiths and, and the, 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 the teachings of those holy hadiths. One knowledge if I give it out the companions would have cut my head. What type of knowledge was that? That the holy companions who had immense yaqeen would have become angered by that, not bewildered by it. So means then upon every knowledge there's an immensely more deeper knowledge and Allah's knowledges and realities never stop. It's a matter of how much we can empty our heart of ourself and how, and how vast the heart can be to go deep into these realities, inshaAllah. Sayyidi, I have a question about dreams. dreams. Is there a way to become more enlightened in dreams? Yeah, we had a whole thing of dreams. Did we ever find the article that I was looking for on dreams? Because I needed to send it to Asim. Did we ever find that article on dreams where I, we, we gave a talk that, that our way is absolutely divorce yourself from dreams. This is the most dangerous time to be in dreamland, like Alice in Wonderland. If for any reason you, you take an interest in dreams, you've sent out now a signal to the nefarious world of beings and they say, oh this one gets their guidance from dreams. Means then all night long they're going to come around your head and just merely hijack your signal all day long, all night long. They don't want the use of your head, they want the use of your heart. So we gave a talk that when you use your head and the dreams that are coming and the people whom are interested in dreams then as soon as they sleep they merely just come around the head and they broadcast into the television 
a whole story, many stories they fly you here, fly you there, show you this, show you that and that's not. Imam al-Rabbani from the Nashbandi chain, Mawlana Sirhindi described that this is the lowest of our way and the real state is the state through the living heart in which you negate yourself and the nafs that blocking you from all inspirations with good character and training so that in your waking state you connect and your fayas is coming, your coordinates are coming through a living wakeful heart. Because in the dream world then it's not controlled, who was sending it, what is the information they were giving, they can even reveal information about other people. Oh I saw you like walking down the street, I saw that you were like had shoes, big shoes on. Well any jinn could have seen that I had big shoes on, that's not something from the heavens as a revelation. That's not even uloom and knowledges. So that's not information, that's just you have a jasus, you have a spy somewhere helping you and you're relying on, on that spying and then builds a very bad and dangerous relationship. The knowledges that we're talking about is living knowledges that you're connected, you're connected to the hearts and the fires is coming and they're teaching you live into your heart, inshaAllah. Sayyidi, can we read Qur'an in English translation if we can't read Arabic? Definitely, it's highly recommended that get the Qur'an that has transliteration and English. So when you say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, then you're looking at the English and you're able to say, Bi ismi ba, and then you can see the letters. That way that when you read the English for your knowledge and you go back and look at the harufs, look at the, the writings of the… because the Arabic is always there. The transliteration then gives you more understanding of how and these words that are being said. And then the more you're reciting from the transliteration then the more and more this understanding comes into the heart, Ah Rahman, Ah Rahim. And it's Arabic has the secret, not the English. The English is for you to just understand, for us to understand. The secret in the actual Arabic huruf is of an ancient reality. And just by looking at it the light and the angel that is in charge of that huruf will begin to send that light within the heart of that servant, inshaAllah. On dreams, uh, Sayyidi, I ignore all dreams, however if we see you or other representatives of Shaykh Nazim what should we do? Ignore it. <laughs> it could be nafsani and put it for yourself and throw it away afterwards, don't worry about it. Because that also, we have uh, 25 years we're doing this. Somebody comes and says, oh, Shaykh, I want to come to tariqah, I want to come. And then they want to sit, but Shaykh, you know, I saw a dream of this, 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 I saw this, this, I saw this, 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 this. That now you gave everything that you saw of that dream to your nafs. And as a result, the nafs took it and told you, you're someone important. And then now you repeat it to people to show them, I'm important. Respect me. I've got a complaint now, they say, oh big Sayyid came to the shaykh, he was mistreated by the shaykh. So how was he mistreated by the shaykh? Because we put a guest into our guest room, I was, I was supposed to give him like my bedroom to a guest. There's a young boy who came to visit, young man twenty-something years old. People think very highly of themselves. If you don't give them what they think that they're due to, they say, oh you disrespect him, so I give you the best of what I have. Now if you don't think that's good, the adab is with you not to be appreciating what somebody offered to you, it's the best of what they had. If you're used to a higher standard that's your problem. But the adab of, of tariqah was to be thankful for whatever Allah sends to us. You go somewhere and there's a food that you eat, you can't be insulted that the food wasn't good. What kind of mentality is that? So alhamdulillah Allah gave me something to eat, there's a huge amount of people with no food to eat. But arrogance to think I'm somebody and should have been treated differently. What was the question? <laughs> oh uh, Sayyidi, I ignore all dreams, however if we see you or other representatives of Shaykh Nazim what should we do? Nothing, listen yeah. to it, watch it, don't worry about it. It's for your entertainment. It's, it's, it's for you to have a, 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 
a khushya sense of happiness. Many people come tariqah, when I'm, I'm, I wonder if I'm really with the shaykh. Then Shaykh Nazim appears to them, yeah you're with us, okay good, now what are you going to do? That's it. So you use the dreams that are coming as, Alhamdulillah Ya Rabbi Shukr. Even they come in stronger we've described before, you practice, you practice even in your meditation Imam Ali described that, annihilate in your annihilation, annihilate in your annihilation. Means even you're meditating and you're, you become good in your tafakkur, if you don't have the concept that I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, your nafsani will become in the meditation and say, oh the shaykh is bringing me a jubbah, another shaykh is bringing me a sword of light, another shaykh is bringing me cups to drink from the kawthar. You start to believe it, now your nafs entered into your dream, into your tafakkur, into your contemplation. So Prophet described, don't leave yourself for the blink of an eye. So even in your tafakkur and contemplation that, Ya Rabbi thank you, thank you, alhamdulillah whatever is trying to be shown to me, I'm asking to enter into your oceans of power and light. Not a need to be entertained by the visual things like that. So you have to keep even negating, negating that I want to reach to an ocean of power in which is an ocean of lightning everywhere and I want to enter into that ocean of lightning and to vanish. So that that lightning hit you and you enter into an energy world. So all that's important for us is to enter into that energy and to be dressed by its energy. So it's like being on a tour bus, if every day they want to bring you all these things and then, then you just sit to see those. Can you bring me a jubba? Is there a jubba out there? Oh, oh this is so nice this jubba. And then you, all your nafs is all involved in it. So they said, even the gate. So, Ya Rabbi, thank you if it's real, alhamdulillah, but I want to reach to this energy and I don't want to stop until that, I want to breathe from this energy. So then you're continuously having to train yourself of the nothingness, it doesn't end, it's just beginning in the tafakkur. That's why then the dream is dangerous because you're not saying that. You're like, wow that was interesting and then again next one and then again before you know it you're in like Alice in Wonderland, it's a fantasy land. Sayyidi, can you enlighten us on the reason behind feeling a very strong fear or anxiety that has been nearly constant over the past couple of weeks of learning from the teachings and making the uh, faqr? Yeah, this is the awareness of the soul. If the people are heedless because they don't see what's coming on the horizon, the soul is not heedless, the soul is light. It sees exactly what's coming on the horizon. So when they're asking people, meditate, meditate. Meditate what is open the eye of your soul? Your soul is seeing something and it wants you to know the danger that's coming. And you can see it, you turn the TV on and people are trying to take your faith away. Put the instill within you a sense of death is coming, death is everywhere, death counts are going <laughs> showing how many people died today. Why? To take your faith away and for, for panic to begin and all fear is the opposite of iman. So then the meditate can communicate, connect your heart with Prophet for this light to come, this light to come, this protection and madad to come so that it's not the world of fear but it's the light of faith and iman where the light is dressing you. The clarity comes into spiritual vision and you begin to understand all oh, these difficulties are coming. But alhamdulillah inshaAllah we're good with Allah good with Sayyidina Muhammad then no fear and no grief inshaAllah. Alaykum As Sayyidi Wa Sri The bodies of people who die of COVID-19 are burnt, what should we be doing and reciting in this difficult situation we are in? Please make dua for our shaykh. InshaAllah Allah protect us from this type of difficulty and then uh, not to die in a state in which to, is, is difficult and that's why then the Ayatul Kursi, keep doing the awrad, keep reciting the madads, keep reciting the dua Ayatul Kursi on the app, do the, the salawats, dua mandur from uh, Shaykh Abdul Faiz Dagestani, Sultanul Awliya, so all of the app is then your tools. Keep making these du'as, keep making these du'as that whatever comes is merely a cold and a flu and it comes and goes. The virus is one thing but the shayateen that are attached to it and attacking is a different. The virus come and go like a cold, 
for the believer whom Allah inshaAllah protect and, and to safeguard and to safe, safeguard those whom are sick and that not to, to pass away in a state of in which they have to be burned and Allah save them inshaAllah okay. from this horrific difficulties upon this earth. And that's why again the importance of, can you imagine doing this alone and saying everything is shirk and who are you calling out to, who are you asking for help, who are you going to get du'as from? Who that's why this whole teaching is an immense mercy that when you have this love for Sayyidina Muhammad throw yourself at that threshold, throw ourselves at that Raza Sharif, don't let me to be burnt Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem that they're coming after me with fire, don't let me to be burned, don't let my loved ones to be burned. At kumina nar, at kumina nar, you know to grant me a maghfir and forgiveness. Don't let them to burn us, Ya Rabbi, whatever you did wrong, grant the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and only that love to save us. At kumina nar Ya Rabbi, wa fatha abwaab samaa wa ma'i munhamiran, open the gates of your heaven and shower us from the water of your mercy. Wherever we came wrong and our actions were wrong, we're under the khirk and the jubba of Sayyidina Muhammad Grant a nijad and a safety from all fire and all difficulty, Ya Rabbi, for the sake of our love for Sayyidina Muhammad Not our actions, not our doings, nothing of that will save us, Ya Rabbi, but this immense muhabbat. Grant that muhabbat to fill us and fill us with a light that is on every part of our body, not even our finger and our toes to burn, Ya Rabbi. Fill it with the light and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Every sickness to come to us. That you are ismuhu dawas wa zikruhu shafas, that your name is our medicine and your praising is our intercession and our relief. Illa sharaf al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ali sahabi kiram wa ala mashaykhina fi tariqa shmandiya tarahliya wa sali sadat hamasidiqin al fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.